The Daily Tech News Show is made possible by patrons like you at patreon.com slash ace the tech. Thank you. For information on how to contribute, go to bit.ly slash help DTNS. You're on the Frog Pants Studios Network. Audio so good, it's like you're there. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Andrew Zarian came all the way from Queens. I did. Thank you for having me, Tom. You helped me helping me take Manhattan. We're taking Manhattan. The Bronx? No. No, nobody cares. Yeah. Nah. This is good. We got two. We're Queens and Manhattan. I'm okay with it. <laughs> That's all we need. Hey, thanks for coming, man. GFTNetwork.com. If you haven't seen Andrew, go check it out. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about technology because that's what we do here, uh, especially that HBO Go bombshell. Big story. Yeah. A lot to talk about there. I have theories. I'm sure Andrew has theories. But let's start off with some headlines. CNET reports Google introduced three new Nexus devices today, or Nexi, perhaps. Uh, the 8.9-inch Nexus 9 tablet, which is made by HTC. The Nexus 6, which, by the way, since the Nexus 1, I've been waiting for them to release the Nexus 6 because the replicants in Blade Runner are Nexus 6. Nexus 6. Yeah, so this is the day the Tyrell Corporation will be suing. Uh, the Nexus 6, Nexus 6 smartphone has a 5.93-inch display. They could have called it the Nexus 5.93. Uh, it's made by Motorola. And Asus is making something called the Nexus Player, which is the first Android TV device. All of these run Lollipop which we now know is the new name for Android L. The Nexus 9 and the Nexus Player start pre-orders on October 17th. They'll be in stores November 3rd. The Nexus 9 uh, runs from $399 for the 16 gig up to $599 for the 32 gig. So undercutting the iPad a little bit there. Uh, 32 gig has LTE, by the way, at $599. The Nexus Player is $99 with an optional game controller you can buy for $40, which makes it seem very much like the Fire TV. And you can pre-order the Nexus 6 Fablet. October 29th, it'll go on sale in November. Uh, in the U.S., it's going to be on Sprint, U.S. Cellular, AT&T, and T-Mobile. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised at the pricing of the Nexus 6. It what is. the Nexus 5.93? The Nexus 5.93. Uh, it's, it's a little pricey. It's not cheap on subsidized. 649 bucks unlocked for 32 gigs, 699 for 64 gigs. Yeah, that's not cheap. It's not cheap, but it's also, a, uh, I think it's a little under the iPhone 6. What's interesting is that with the Nexus 5... They the whole point was to sell it unsubsidized. So you would go, it was three ninety nine, you bought it. But this one is nearly double the price, three hundred dollars more than the Nexus Five was. Yeah. Maybe this whole concept of selling the unsubsidized phone is not really what they're looking to do with well, it. Well, you get point four three more inches for the same price well, as an iPhone. I mean. 300 bucks. That's, 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 yeah, that's a lot of extra yeah. inches. Uh, so, when will other phones get Lollipop? Well, Google says the Nexus 5, Nexus 7, and Nexus 10 tablets and Google Play Edition devices should get it in the coming weeks. They don't say exactly when, but in a few weeks. Ars Technica reports HTC promised updates for some of its flagship phones within 90 days of Lollipop's release, so that should happen. And Motorola says both the 2013 and 2014 Moto X, 2013-2014 Moto G, the Moto E and the Droid Ultra Max and Mini will all get it. They didn't know this one. But no one knows it. So, but it's really up to the carriers more than anything else, right? Because well, in the Google editions, uh, it's, it's not. Up to them. It, they, it's up to them. And I think what Motorola is saying is we'll we'll put it out there as well. Yeah. I don't know about HTC how that works. With I um I have a OnePlus, which they have said within ninety days you'll get you'll it. Get Sixty it. days you'll get it. Uh, you'll, we'll probably get it before, but the LG G2 and the LG G3, who knows? Yeah. You don't know because it's a carrier phone and Verizon decides, okay, fine, we'll push the update, we'll get the update. And, and that's the issue with Android, right? Are there any phones that haven't gotten KitKat? Uh, I think there are a couple. Well, but, And I'm not talking about like super budget, newer phones. budget phones either. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, usually I avoid Apple leaks, especially the day before an announcement, but this one has actual facts in it. Mark Gurman at 9to5Mac <laughs> discovered screenshots for the iOS 8.1 iPad user guide in iBooks included pictures of something called an iPad Air 2 and an iPad Mini 3. The screenshots indicated both new models had Touch ID sensors and that the iPad 2 Air has a new burst mode for pictures, like the iPhone. The designs pictured are nearly identical to the current iPad. So exactly what people have predicted for those two devices. Yeah, unless this is some draft version that wasn't supposed to be published or something like that, but it seems pretty pretty 
reliable that I mean, we're going to get the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Mini 3. Yeah. yeah. So, but what nobody's else? really surprised. No, yeah. what's the what else? It's the what else? Be, yeah. What, what was the what does it say on the invite? Uh, it's been it's too long. It's been way too long. Way too long. Yeah. That's why I think wireless power. Wireless power. That's Those <laughs> long extension cords. <laughs> That's not what I mean. We're getting Macs. That's what we're getting. We're getting probably iMacs, maybe some Mac Minis, something like that. That's my guess. Recode reports HBO CEO Richard Plepler told investors at the Time Warner Incorporated investor meeting, quote, in 2015, we will launch a standalone over-the-top HBO service in the United States. And Twitter exploded with joy. However, they didn't listen to the next line. He said, we will work with our current partners and we will explore models with new partners. Don't forget, current partners are cable companies who also happen to be ISPs. What does it mean? We don't know yet. We're good. We got theories. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, Recode reports Netflix hit expectations for revenue in Q3 with $1.41 billion and 96 cents of earnings per share. Uh, they were buffeted a bit by that HBO news. However, they're buffeted a little more because they missed on subscriber expectations. Uh, in a letter to investors, Reed Hastings wrote this quarter, we over forecasted membership growth. Probably the price increase. Didn't yeah, I, th- I think that probably didn't help either. And apparently uh, they've been signing up two international subscribers for every one domestic. They want that probably to be a more parity, I would guess. I guess I guess so. I, I mean, have they – they've been more proactive as far as getting international subscribers over the last year. Yeah, they've so, been opening up in more and more yeah. markets. So uh, they, they, I'm sure they'll be fine, uh, but it's not a good day for Netflix news. Ars Technica reports a new vulnerability in SSL version 3 called the Poodle has been discovered that could be used to recover session cookies, and therefore once you recover somebody's session cookies, you can impersonate that user through a man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, that's not good. Now, this is not open SSL, so this does not relate to Heartbeat. It's not as severe as Heartbeat. But modern browsers have all switched to using TLS, not SSL version 3. So you may think, oh, well, most client-server interactions won't be affected. I'm fine. However, this is the thing you have to worry about. Browsers have a nasty habit of falling back to SSL version 3 when TLS fails or doesn't exist, which means attackers could use a link to trick a user into becoming vulnerable. So they, they have a link that goes to a server that they know doesn't have TLS that has SSL v3, and then they start the attack. So here's what you do. Server operators should stop supporting SSL version 3. Uh, GigaOM reports companies like Twitter, Cloudflare, and others have done so. You, as a user, unless you're also a server operator, should turn off SSL version 3 support in your browser. And if you want some instructions on how to do that, go to zmap.io slash sslv3 slash browsers.html. We'll have that link in the show notes as well at zmap.io slash sslv3. Uh, Mozilla and Google have announced they're going to actually remove support for SSL version 3 from their client software in the next versions of their browsers. There is not a way to turn off SSL version 3 in Safari or IE6. Hopefully Apple will come up with a fix for Safari that allows you to do that. On the other hand, anyone using IE6 should just (laughs) stop. Stop right now, please. Yeah. Uh, VentureBeat reports that Qualcomm will acquire CSR, maker of Bluetooth and GPS chips, for $2.5 billion in cash. CSR is based in Cambridge, England. In addition to its chips, the company has been branching out into cars, and not making cars, but making chips for cars, and Internet of Things. CSR had previously turned down an acquisition offer for Microchip Technology, a maker of microcontrollers, but I guess Qualcomm had the money. So integration of GPS, Bluetooth, some Internet of Things, car stuff, that's yeah, good for Qualcomm. That, that's very good for Qualcomm. Makes their lives a lot easier. ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley reports Microsoft and Docker have announced Docker container support will be included in the next release of Microsoft Windows Server, which is expected sometime mid-2015. Docker container apps, if you don't know, uh, will run on Windows Server or Windows Server Next virtual machine in Azure. Docker uses containers to enable apps to run across platforms or to have multiple apps run at once on one server without needing a virtual machine. People are excited about Docker. Very excited. Uh, I know the uh, the server people are very enterprises very excited. eBay reported its third quarter earnings and reported revenues of 4.4 billion dollars, growing 12 percent from a year ago, beating Wall Street's expectations and eBay's own estimates. PayPal is on track to process one billion mobile transactions in 2014, with mobile payments this quarter at 12 billion dollars, up 72 percent. Of course, people paying attention to that because PayPal is going to get spun out. They're split as a company. company yeah. 
Time for some news from you. These are submitted from our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Lots of the stories in the headlines are submitted here, but I, uh, you know, the obvious ones like HBO Go are going to be in the headlines anyway. I like to call out a few every time uh, we do this show. And if you are in the subreddit, thank you. And if you're not, go there, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. eBridges13 submitted the Sploid post about an Aviation Week story on Lockheed Martin's compact fusion reactor, which is safer and cleaner than nuclear fission reactors. The CFR experiment called T4 is about the size of a business jet engine. Up until now, fusion reactors were pretty massive in size and in expense. Lockheed's CFR uses plasma containment more efficiently so that for the same size, it can generate 10 times more power than a typical fusion reactor. But before you get too excited, and I can tell you're getting very excited, very excited. Uh, Lockheed has yet to build a prototype. And even after they build a prototype, it's going to be five years for production. <laughs> While down the line. Yeah, so this is one of those, like, should be great, might never see it, but if it does come to fruition, this is going to be huge. It's going to be great. My father actually summed me this story this morning, which is really funny. Oh, yeah? Was yeah. he excited? My father's a big plane guy. Oh, okay. He's really yeah. into that kind of stuff. No, and, and this would not only be good for power generation, but it would be good for space flight. Yeah. Uh, for, for lots of things that, that need compact but massive power. MacBytes submitted The Verge report, writing up the news that Facebook and Apple are offering new employee benefits. Both companies cover the costs of egg freezing procedures up to $20,000 for individual employees. That's eggs from humans, not like the eggs from chickens. From the market. Yeah, this is a fertility thing. The procedure, known as oocyte cryopreservation, allows women to harvest healthy reproductive eggs during their most fertile years and freeze them for later. While the procedure is still relatively new and doctors are still assessing its effectiveness, it does indicate that Apple and Facebook are thinking about the needs of their current and possibly future female employees been a few write-ups saying, oh, this is trying to force employees into working longer and putting off kids. Uh, but our producer, Jenny Josephson, said it's you th- it's a good – it's looking out for employees' needs. It's a positive. I mean if, if you're committed to the company and you're working, wh- why why wouldn't they offer this? Yeah, they're not forcing anyone to do it. Yeah, they're not saying freeze your they're, eggs. They're saying we will work. cover the cost of this very expensive procedure yeah. if you want it. Yeah. And I, I think that's personally better than not covering the procedure, but – it's still your choice to do yeah. it, you know. You don't have to. And Jenny agrees, so that yeah. makes me feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kipper submitted the VentureBeat article that Firefox 33 arrived today for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Among the new features is support for encoding and decoding open H.264 sandbox support through Cisco's H.264 implementation. Works for WebRTC, but not for video tags yet. There are also improvements to the search bar in there, and the Android version of Firefox has added Send to Device as an option for video. That works both with Chromecast and Roku devices. It's actually very cool. Yeah. So you'll be able to just like take a video if it's compatible – Press the little cast button and send it out it of over. Firefox and send it over. The Roku feature is fascinating because I don't know a lot of devices that work with Roku. So yeah. the fact that they're supporting it is actually It always really surprises good. me when one pops up and I have my Roku on. I'm like, whoa, I can actually do <laughs> I that. Can do that. That's pretty cool. And that is a look at the headlines. All right, let's talk about this HBO thing. Uh, Richard Prepler. Here, let me, let me break down a little more of what happened. This is an investment meeting for Time Warner. Right. So Plepler's just one of the people presenting. Yeah. Uh, during the presentation, I believe before Richard Plepler got up, from what I can tell, Time Warner executives were indicating that they aren't going to go to battle on net neutrality. They see content companies paying to support the increasing strain on broadband networks as a natural evolution of net neutrality. <laughs> Hold that in your mind for a moment. That's a lot of, lot, a lot of words being That's used. That's Time Warner saying, yeah. we know Netflix is, yeah. bu- is combating you. We're not going to do that. Okay. Then Plepler gets up. He spends most of his time talking about how they're going to get better terms from their cable company partners, how they're going to increase cable subscribers, people who already subscribe to cable television but don't get HBO. And then at the end, he cites significant growth opportunities inside the pay TV universe. So he's not even talking about internet yet. Just within pay TV. He's saying we've got 80 million people out there who don't subscribe to HBO. We've got 70 million of them inside of cable television already. We're going to get them. Uh, He said then there are also 10 million broadband only homes. Quote, that is a large and growing opportunity that should no longer be left untapped. It is time to remove all barriers to those who want HBO. Then we got to the poll quote, right? So in 2015, we will launch a standalone over-the-top HBO service in the United States. We will work with our current partners, and we will explore models with new partners, 
all in. There are 80 million homes that do not have HBO, and we will use all our means at our disposal to go after them. So the key points here is made a point of saying not going to fight about net neutrality, made a point of saying still working with the cable companies, working yeah. with our current partners, but then dropped the bombshell. What do you make of this? It's it's a little convoluted, right? Uh, the, the fact that they, he didn't say we're going to take HBO, we're going to offer a standalone service, and this is what it is, and it's going to be this right. Much we didn't get any details. We got nothing like that. I don't – for the cable company, something like HBO is really important because that may be the only thing keeping you connected to the cable company. You could cancel it. Uh, you could cancel your cable and you can't get HBO. Right. So – I don't see them doing a standalone service in that sense, but if you have Time Warner, you may they may say, hey, if you have Time Warner Cable, you could get HBO Go. Right. If you have Time Warner Cable Internet. Is internet, that what you're yeah. Because Time Warner Cable Internet, then you could get it. Yeah. But right. if you have Com- – well, Comcast possible, but maybe if you have Verizon Fios. Yeah. Sorry. I think the best bet here is that they are going to make deals with ISPs directly. And what they've done is they've gone to Comcast, which is the player, yeah. and, and they've probably gone to Time Warner Cable, which don't forget is a different company than Time War- than the Time Warner that owns HBO. They share a name. They used to be in the same yeah, company. It's totally separate. They're totally separate companies now. So they go to those two. Those are the big ones. And they say, look, we know you guys don't want us to offer internet only. We're going to have to offer internet only, though. You, the writing's on the wall. You know yeah. this. Let's figure out how we can make it work for all of us so that you keep – <laughs> paying for our advertising budget essentially but you also we help to improve the number of subscribers you have and the cable companies have started to get on board with the idea that the internet is where they're going to be making their subscriber gains in the future so i think you're right i think hbo says we will provide an internet only version of hbo as a bundled package with comcast with Com- and you have yeah. to be a comcast subscriber to get it and then we will go to other services and we will make similar deals the way we make similar deals for hbo with other cable companies uh where that deal goes from there what else they give comcast i don't know but apparently the one thing they gave them was we will not fight you on net neutrality so here, here's where it gets a little tricky right so you have hbo which has been their go service has been doing great do you see brands like viacom nbc saying okay you know what we're going to take our brand we're going to take our viacom family channels and we're going to bundle that where you could go to get a Viacom package. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to get cable, but you get Viacom, and you get all the Viacom channels in the family. If we start splitting it that way, I think the cable companies would kind of benefit from that because now you're going to pay Viacom. You could pay HBO. Uh, you're going to pay uh, NBC or, or ABC. You're splitting everything. But if you go with cable, you get everything in one shot and possibly could be a little cheaper. That's how cable could kind of grip you know, the, 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 the consumer. Pro- the problem is that start, that looks like a la carte, and the cable companies don't want to give a la carte even on that side of the equation. I think. Right? They, I think in the, the future of television, the future of cable, I think they're going to be forced to give a la carte, but they're going to stick it to the end user for not getting cable. It's going to end up costing you more to do a la sure. carte. You well, could, definitely, definitely. but I mean, a lot of people, if you're if you're watching TV, you watch HBO, you watch Showtime, you watch Viacom, you also watch NBC. So how do you? get everything at the same time it, it's it's a little tricky how they're going to play it but for hbo they could be the first to break away well and hbo is already a la carte right they're already you don't a la carte. have to get it you get it on its own you pay whatever the fee is to get hbo so it's easy to 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 say all right time warner internet subscribers we've got a time warner hbo bundle that yeah. gives you hbo over the internet i think that is the most likely way this goes it's also possible and i read some theories that they could also be bundled with Amazon Prime or they could be bundled with Hulu Plus. Uh, and that would be we're working with the current partners. We're also working with new partners. So that new partners could be Verizon's online only or Sony's online only service. Or it could also be something like Hulu Plus. I could see Hulu Plus saying, hey, it's $8 a month for Hulu Plus, $9 a month for Hulu Plus. It's $18 a month to add HBO Go. Yeah. As long as it's enough that the cable companies don't – like the cable companies are going to want to say it's cheaper if you do it through us. And it's a way to keep customers on the internet. On the internet. With us. So do you see them doing something like let's say Time Warner Cable says, OK, you, you bought the package. You got the internet only from us. Do you like Netflix? Sure. If you got Netflix, Hulu, and HBO, 